Yeah, I have my dear friend uh, Andre. Andre, and Andre, and he's a house manager here at the uh, Joseph House Workshop. All right. So, so uh, tell me a little bit about the place. Well, um, they um, they do a lot, and uh, like I said, I've been homeless before as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So I know what it's like to be homeless, mm -hmm. and they bring people in and they work with them, and mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the alcoholism and maybe drugs or whatever they, they do mm -hmm. they help them they go to a program you know every day mm -hmm. and um, it seems to be it, they do a lot and mm -hmm. then they give them clothes and so mm -hmm. forth mm -hmm. yeah okay all right so uh, would you say that the homeless population is pretty is pretty um drastic and how would that be yes hard? yes it is mm -hmm. uh, it seems like to me mm -hmm. I see more homeless people now than ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. people standing out on the streets and, mm -hmm. you know, with their little signs mm -hmm. or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just terrible. Mm -hmm. And then the cost of living is going up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that doesn't help people much either. Mm -hmm. okay. So. All right. So, yeah, so Salisbury is filled with a whole lot of homeless. homeless yes. The homeless yes. population is great. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go. Right, right. And, um, as far as from your uh, perspective, how would you say that since you've uh, received people in this shelter, uh, how many, uh, what would you say the the rate is or the turnover rate or the success rate, if you will? Uh, it's been pretty successful, but I, there hasn't been that many people here, mm -hmm. you know, since I've been here. Okay. But they do it. They still do a lot, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's just wonderful, mm -hmm. you know. So how did you become house manager in three months? It's you must have been doing your thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I love the job, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, and I put my heart into it. So I guess that means mm -hmm. a lot. That does mean a lot. You put your heart into it, and I want to say, uh, Andre. Yes. I'm proud of you, man. Proud, proud of you. Because that means that God is doing a work in your heart. Oh, yeah. yeah. All the time. Absolutely. And that All means since you've been here, then then the Joseph House Workshop is doing their job. Yes. They're doing what God has called them to do. Right. And God is calling the Joseph House Workshop to turn lives around and change people and turn men, I mean boys, into men. Right. Right? And make them model citizens for our community. Because we need more people like Andre that's willing to say, you know what? I'm no longer homeless. God has become my shelter yeah. in the time of a storm. Right. You know? And so and so and so I was very intrigued with uh Mr. Nick showing me around and showing me the area where you guys uh not just sleep, but where you guys study, where you mm -hmm. guys do your GED, where you guys educate yourself. Right. Because uh, you know, and so that's what we need. We need more people like yourself and like Mr. Nick in this place like this to not just shelter people, but but bring them here for a season. Right. You know, so they so their lives can advance, you know, from where they were to where they're going to be, you know, so they can transition from not just being homeless. Because when I think in terms of homeless, I think in, not in just terms of being physically without a house, but empty on the inside as well. Yeah. You know. Um, Go ahead, Nick. I don't mean to talk to him. I mean, uh, no, no, Mr. Joe. No, you uh, good. Uh, 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 to me... Homeless is more than just being without a house. Yes. Because, <clears throat> like I said, I've been homeless before mm -hmm. too. And it ain't because you don't have a job or you mm -hmm. ain't been working. It's mm -hmm. just that things happen to where you lose your place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's not good. Mm -hmm. People look at you and say, well, he ain't nothing. He ain't mm -hmm. doing this and he wow. ain't doing that because wow. he don't have this and he had that. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case. Mm -hmm. It's, I've seen people have have a lot, and all of a sudden it can get wiped wiped away. Yeah, yeah. With no problem, mm -hmm. you know. So it's all kind of ways and all kind of things. But it's intriguing. So I, I would imagine that when people say "look at you as not being anything," that that would mess with your self esteem and make you feel. Oh yeah, way. pretty much, pretty much, because it'll make you feel like nothing. Mm -hmm. You already got nothing. Right, right. And that's not helping you. Mm -hmm. And it throws people in on the limb. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they should say that or be that because a lot of people can't handle that and they take their own life. Mm. Wow. 
because they had no one to talk to. Yeah. Or no one to turn to. That's awesome. So they internalize a lot of the pain. Right. You know, the pain of not having anything, the pain of at, at one point having something and then losing it all. Yes. And so now they got to come here yeah. and, 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 and some, like you said, commit suicide. Yeah, some don't make it here. Mm -hmm. Some or overdose. Or we even see, receive the help yeah. because they're too far gone. Mm -hmm. They have no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. Which if some had something to talk to or someone to talk to, they might still be here. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But, so That's good. That's good. That's good. So I got a lot out of what you just said. And sometimes, I, you know, a lot of the things I was saying, I, want, I was saying so I could spur a conversation, want you, right. you know. Right. But, uh, guys, we're going to um, wrap this session up with Mr. See, I, I, see, I'm getting old. I can't remember your name. What's your name? Andre. Andre. We're going to wrap this up with Mr. Andre. Thank you so much. And our next person we're going to talk to is Brother Nick. Welcome. We're back again with Mr. Nick. Our, uh, our What would you call yourself? What's your, what's your the, title? I'm the director. Our uh, director of the Joseph House Workshop. Man, listen, man, it's such an awesome. This is the second time I met yeah. you. Yes, sir. I look uh, forward to seeing yeah, you again. I came here actually one day volunteering. I uh, came here to fill out a volunteer application. And um, me and Nick did a walk around. And um, and he seems like a very awesome man that um, has been doing this work for quite some time. Nick, I mean, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Andre Nick, let me get it right. Andre Nick, this is Nick. Nick, so how long you been um, uh, in in the business of working with men? Oh wow. Well, it's been it's been a long time. I I was doing it in internship when I was going to college. Okay. You know, so I took psychology in college. To, mm -hmm. So it's been a while. I've been with Joseph House since 2017. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, First, I was a house manager. Then I became assistant director. Then I became the director. Yeah. And the things that this place offers people to be able to give them the tools to reestablish their life and learn life skills. We teach ten courses when they're in phase one. Give them ten courses to do. They do community service, help other homeless people. So this place really offers a lot. They can stay here up to two years mm -hmm. for this program. And once they reach phase two, which is in about 12 weeks after being here, we uh, help them fill out an application. You see no computer room. Mm -hmm. Help them fill out an application and help them um, do a resume mm -hmm. for jobs that they're wanting. And then they can do job search. We take them on interviews and then mm -hmm. they get their job. Then once they get a job, they pay $50 a week and save the rest of their check. Mm -hmm. How about that? All that you help them save it, or yes, it goes into a fund that way they're not tempted to use it right. or feel they have a lot of money and think they all right, mm -hmm. I'm going out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, because it's a temptation to a lot of addicts and mm -hmm. alcoholics, they got money, they got to spend it. Mm -hmm. and so what we do is put it in a savings account for them, mm -hmm. and when they leave, we give them a check. Uh -huh. They have a permanent savings account and a temporary savings account which the temporary savings account helps pay bills like if they're back on child support mm -hmm. or they're trying to get their license back, they use that. Mm -hmm. The permanent savings account, you can't touch that's for when you leave. Right, right. okay. But we, we try to get them to save everything, <coughs> the permanent and temporary, so they can leave here. And then we can help them find a job. Mm -hmm. We help them try to get a, a vehicle before they leave. And we try to have them save it like $10,000 or something. Right, right. You know, so when they leave, that they will get their apartment and everything, and then boom, they're broke again. No, we want them to be able to pay their rent three or four times right. over, mm -hmm. you know, right. and still have money, right? Just in case hardship happens or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome, Nick. Um, but this place offers everything free of charge. We're, we're ran by donations, so if anybody's willing to hygiene products, anything to help, you know, Joseph House or the Crisis Center. We welcome all. So, donations. so what is the web? What is the? How do they actually donate? If somebody's watching this, somebody watching this right now, wants to donate to the Joseph House Workshop, how they would they go about that? They can come here, mm -hmm. and we have receipts. If you want it for tax deductible, mm -hmm. we give receipts also mm -hmm. that that you donated something, and we'll give you a receipt for it. Or you just anything, clothes or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, of any size, socks, underwear, any sizes, it's it's welcome here. It's because mm -hmm. these guys, eighty percent of these guys come here, they have nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. So you know, we buy them their hygiene products and cleaning supplies here, food. 
So anything's welcome. They can just drop it off here. If you have something that you want to get to the crisis center, and if they're closed, you can drop it off here. Because here, somebody's here 24-7. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not, we're never closed. Mm -hmm. So. So around about the holidays of this, this time of year, uh, how would you say the um, holidays affect the um, residents here? Well, we do little things for holidays. Like right now, the residents are out giving out toys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. You know, you, you've seen all the Yeah, I was stopped when I came up here. Right. What you here for? <laughs> right. right. So, right. So, mm -hmm. right now, we're giving out toys mm -hmm. for the kids and okay. stuff right now. That's why all the traffic's mm -hmm. out there now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do a lot to keep ourselves busy. You know, we, we encourage people to contact family, mm -hmm. you know, and if they're in a position like 2.5 phase here they can actually go home and spend time with family and then come back okay so. that's good that's good that's good yeah. you know I know around about the and another reason why I asked the question because I know around about this time of year it, even though it's a joyous occasion for many it's a sad occasion mm -hmm. because some have uh, lost loved ones around you know and so now uh, uh, where there was a seat for a father or mother or a daughter or a son that seat is now empty. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these guys come here and and um, some of them uh, are still mourning and grieving because of a loss mm -hmm. or they don't have family as they would like to. How, how, how would you say, um, how do you cope with people that are grieving, still grieving? Surprisingly, when guys come here, we're what's called a therapeutic community here, which we help each other, we bond with each other, and we become a family within a Mm. in this place mm -hmm. so it's not like you're really missing family because these guys become brothers i love here, it you know? i love it yeah so and if they are mourning over a lost one this time of year or something like that they have brothers that they can rely on because mm -hmm. they do everything together here so you can't help but bond with somebody else mm -hmm. you can always relate to at least one person here mm -hmm. you know so surprisingly there's not too many people down and out, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. feeling like I have a loss mm -hmm. or something because mm -hmm. they have family here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's true, you can just, before your eyes, you have somebody that come in here all quiet and everything, within a month, they're chatty. They're like oh, brothers, you know, because they go shopping together, they go to meetings together, they go to classes together, they eat together, they sleep together in them mm -hmm. dorms, you know, yeah, so they watch TV. So it, it becomes a family in here, mm -hmm. especially when you're with somebody for two years. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You know, mm -hmm. so it's so surprising that somebody's always has somebody, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. So do these guys go to church or anything? Yeah, every Sunday they go to Oak Ridge okay. Baptist Church. And every day they go to uh, two meetings, an mm -hmm. a NA meeting and an AA meeting. They go to that as part of the program. Okay. It's part of the program to go to church also. Okay. Yeah. And when you get into phase two, you can pick any church you want to go to. Oh, but that? a lot of them want to stay in the church they've been going to, good, which good. is Oak Ridge. Okay, um, I had another question that slipped my mind. Do you have to be an addict to go to come here? No. Mm -hmm. The only thing you or have homeless. to be, you have to be homeless or else and and jobless because the first three months you can't work. So it's mandatory for you to be homeless. So that the thing is, is it sort of more like a homeless shelter or no? It's not. A, it's not a shelter at all. It's a program. So it's like if. You already have a place to stay and you already have a job. We have nothing to offer you. Right, right. Because that is what we <laughs> yeah. are trying to bring you to is right. to become independent, successful people with a job, mm -hmm. you know, okay. and, and be able to contribute to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you already have a job, you're going to lose the coming here because you can't work right, for right. your first three months here because so you have like a lot of classes. So like the blackout phase, the yeah. first three months? No, the, the blackout stage is the first 30 days. Okay. Then... The next two months is going through classes and stuff like that. You okay. can't have your phone in mm -hmm. phase one. So there's a lot of things. And the reason why we don't let you have your phone here is to get your mind off the streets and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. You know, and start focus on yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. All right, what are these character defaults that I have that I need to correct? And I don't know how to handle it because I keep finding myself homeless mm -hmm. or going back to alcohol or drugs. And that's the part where you have to work on so you'd be able to handle it when we you do get a job and yeah, start absolutely, working. Yeah, absolutely. Do, do you know what the success rate is? Um, do y'all have any way of calculating that? Yeah, it's. I say out of ten people, six of them will make it through, mm -hmm. and um, 
four of them would just give up. And wanna, you know, so the, these be, people that are here and leave, or yeah, what about the ones that actually, um, like in the two years, you see them bounce back? Well, you can stay here up to two years. You don't have to be here two years. Right. So if you feel you have enough money, we you got an apartment, you have a car, you know, or some people just don't want a car, they have a bike or whatever. If you feel you're ready to go, and we feel you're ready to go, you mm-hmm. completed the program. You right. don't have to be, I advise everybody to stay the two years mm-hmm. to save as much money as you can, because mm-hmm. anything can happen. Right, right. But you don't have to be here two years. So a success is you get in your apartment, you reach the goals that you said you had mm-hmm. in a, when you came here. Do anybody ever come, oh, I did not mean no, to cut no. you off. Do anybody ever come back and say thank you? <laughs> oh yeah, all, all the time. Because you know, we, we, keep, we keep track of people that leave here, even yeah, if they yeah. leave here, that we we would have to kick them out for some reason that they didn't fit the program mm-hmm. or they were interfering with other people's program. Mm-hmm. We still try to follow up on them to see how they're doing. Do they need something or you know we're just not gonna just let them go out there by themselves. I know there's no greater feeling than actually seeing people that you've mentored because that's kind of what you guys do, right? Yeah, you mentor people for a we're season. We're a therapeutic community. Yeah. Everybody helps everybody, mm-hmm. and know? so you know mentor them and then see them get a job, see them save their money. And then they go out and get the, to get this stuff for an apartment or a house. Mm-hmm. And then they got to say, if it wasn't for God using the Joseph House workshop, I would not be where I am today. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that's a very gratifying feeling to know that oh, you've helped somebody. It's very rewarding mm-hmm. to see people get their life back in order because everybody has the potential to mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. It's just they don't realize they do. Mm-hmm. And once they clean themselves up and start learning things and mm-hmm. feeling better about themselves, they see that they can. Amen. That's awesome. You know, because awesome. they've been... They've been knocked down, knocked down, knocked down mm-hmm. because of what the drug habit, mental health, or mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. and they don't feel that they can do it mm-hmm. until oh. they. And that's the purpose of blackout thirty days and not having your phone and all that, so you can realize that instead of staying in touch with maybe somebody that not influential in your life yeah, that can yeah. keep knocking you down, keep knocking you down, or come on, you don't need that place, come on, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, bad influences, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. and. That's where I, what I see a lot of people where they'll fail is they keep their mind on the streets instead mm. of their mind on change. Mm, mm. So now they got to detoxify their mind mm. from their past issues. Absolutely. Yeah, because I think that's powerful. I, I, cause I, yeah, two years is, is, is more than enough time, to, I, I would say, because I know it takes about a good nine months to a year for your... They, some say 30 days, but it takes a little longer than that. Oh, it takes I mean, way more than yeah, 30 days. For your mind to, to, to detoxify and get all that stuff yeah, out your way, system. Way more than 30 days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, absolutely. But, man, let me tell you something, man. This is a powerful thing. Absolutely, you man. Doing, absolutely. Man. I'm, I'm, these I'm guys, so these, I'm so proud of these guys. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of the staff that mm-hmm. we have here. They, they're they 100%. They're not here to get rich or anything. Yeah. They, because the the money is not that great in, in a yeah. nonprofit organization, mm-hmm. they're here for the right reason to help others to get their life Amen. back in order, Amen. and it's needed by it's and more needed. And your riches is in heaven. Yes, it's, your reward is in heaven. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to I'm going to um I don't think I have any more questions. Yeah, you did a great <laughs> you job. Man. You did a great job. You did a great job. You did a great job. <laughs> I don't man. interview much, but I'm you made I, me I, feel I, comfortable here. Yeah, well, you know, I like interviewing people like yourself because um I I tell a little bit about myself. Um I I I started off in a program like this, Teen Challenge. And I was uh uh I graduated the program and then when I graduated the program I became an intern. And when I became an intern, you know, I'm like, you know, hey, it is what it is. But I didn't realize that I was gonna um that God had a bigger plan for me. And so, being an intern, you know, I found myself working at shelters, Christian shelters, when I when I actually left the program, and now I'm, I'm certified, you know, PRP uh, program, uh, psychiatric, dealing with people with mental health as well as youth and adults. And so, I absolutely love it because I love to help people. And there's a dearth, and it's funny, and I'll say this: there's a dearth in our community for mentors. Um, because it takes patience dealing with people. Yes. Somebody was patient with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So we have to be patient with other Absolutely. people. Absolutely. You know? And um, and so so this, in my opinion, you know, I grew up in church. This supersedes church anity mm-hmm. because a lot of church folk aren't patient with people, mm-hmm. you know? And so it takes a special oil, special anointing. 
to have patience for, with people. And the Bible tells us we need to be patient one with another and esteem others higher than yourself. And so by you walk, walking alongside people, because we don't want to walk alongside men, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, we, we, but, but somebody had to walk alongside me. And trust me, I was hard-headed. And still sometimes my wife have to kick me in the butt, <laughs> you know. But, you know, it's called accountability, though, Absolutely. you know. And so you learn that real quick. Guys, listen, I want to thank you, uh, Brother Nick and um, Brother uh, brother, uh, brother Andres. I'm getting names. I want to appreciate you guys uh, for allowing me and taking this time out of your busy schedule to let me interview you because others are going to see this and, and, and be a blessing to this, commu to this community. And... Um, and so um, I, I would say this to anybody watching, um, keep this program in prayer, keep the men here in prayer, uh, keep Nick and Andre in prayer, and, uh, and matter of fact, we're going to pray right now. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for allowing us to come here today to, to talk and to uh, do interviews and to uh, encourage somebody that's maybe watching this right now. Somebody needs hope. Somebody has a cousin, Lord, that needs to come to this program. Somebody has a brother that's homeless. Somebody got, somebody's going through something when it comes to work. And so, Father, we just pray right now that you would bless this program, bless this ministry, uh, and bless the people that are working here, Father, and volunteering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, sir. This is where the people, after their day of classes and everything, they can come in here and watch movies and do work. This is where they do their devotionals in the morning time. And then right here, if any of the residents have family come in and visit them, this is the family visiting the area. They can come in here, sit with their families. There's toys in there if their kids want something to play with while they're in here. So this okay. is basically so they can have privacy with their family. Okay. This is the reception area where, you know, we greet people, have meetings. This is this is the computer room. When they when they get into phase two, they can uh, come in here and do their resumes, job search, and everything in here. It's just all piled up because mm. we've been changing these tiles. Okay. Cool. This is one of the classes we have. This is the art class. One of the sisters teach art, and these are some of the things that the guys have made since they've been doing the art class. Awesome. Yeah. This is his office office. If, if guys come in here with any valuables or something mm -hmm. or they want to lock something up, we offer them a locker to be able to lock their locker up. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a residence bathroom right here. We have four showers. Awesome, man. Handicap shower. <laughs> This is a grooming thing. If they have bad, a lot of our residents come out of the woods or whatever, they can soak their feet, get their feet back, because a lot of them will have bad feet from wearing the same socks, shoes. Right, 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 yes, sir. So. Got to take care of the feet. Right. <laughs> this is a little little gym for them to work out, try to get their health back up, their body How strong again. Yeah. How about that? You want to get your workout on. Yeah. Awesome. This is the dormitory. When they first come in, when they're in phase one and all, they'll get a bunk bed. Mm -hmm. And then when they graduate from phase one or start doing good in phase one, mm -hmm. they'll get an individual bed area where there is a little more privacy. Okay, phase one, the bunk beds. Phase two, you get a little bit more seniority. Right. A little more privilege. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How about that? So this is what you call the housing area yeah. where they sleep. Right. Living quarters, okay. Yeah, 
Walking the green mile. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, six o'clock, residents come in and eat dinner. That's the only so meal. Every day at six o'clock? At yeah. 6 p.m., yeah. 6 this, that's the only meal. They all have to be here together and eat. Mm -hmm. So they talk throughout the day if there was any problems with anything. They can talk about it and try to resolve problems okay. they've had throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Some more of the stuff that residents made in our class. So what is this over here? This is where they let up, they, their food is served? Right here. The we, they put the food here. Okay. And then they just line up and go through it. Okay. Cool. Get what they want. This, this is the kitchen. They have access to the kitchen all they want. This mm -hmm. is where they food. And what it is is we have each resident has a week of um of meal duties like what just teach them how to cook how to shop and mm -hmm. have a budget so what they do is write a menu mm -hmm. and then whatever's on that menu i go to sam's club and buy mm -hmm. and then they're responsible for keeping the food not eating the food but on meal days and this is what the menu looks like here they have to fill one of these out, showing what they want to eat that week. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Sam's Club and, and get this stuff for them. Awesome. They have access to a washer and dryer. So they can wash their clothes anytime they want. Mm -hmm. Food pantry, they have access to that. Look at God. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's staff bathroom. We have staff on 24 seven. So, mm -hmm. you know, they have a shower mm -hmm. and washer and dryer and a little refrigerator for staff. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quick. We'll do it again. Here's the bath for the staff. Staff bathroom. Yeah. Shower and all that good stuff. Awesome. Because they're here 24 7. Just stand back and do it. Yeah, that, that's a guest bathroom. I guess only here. This is the classroom where they come in and do their classwork. Mm -hmm. Education. Yeah. And you can see some of the books right here that we use. Mm -hmm. that they, uh, Let's get a look at this. Yeah. They study on battlefield of mind, alcoholism, Alcohol. purpose driven life, survival, NA, and uh, purpose driven life here okay, too. Cool. And, and then we have the GED books. books. Okay. Like if they're trying to learn their GED, we have GED books. We also have college books. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just regular books of yeah. the life that we read. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now we have staff bedroom. Mm -hmm. Like I say, that we have staff on 24 7. Okay. Look at that. Staff's little sitting area, bed, uh, drawers, little books, and the phone in case of an emergency or. If they get a phone call, they don't have to run all the way up there. They yeah. have it here. This is another mm -hmm. staff bed, bedroom. It's rare that we have two of them at a time. Right. Day, but right. Just in case. All right, cool, cool. And if residents come in and they don't have any clothes, we mm -hmm. have clothes that they could pick through mm -hmm. and shoes. So if they come in off the street and they don't have anything. Right. They, they we offer them to go through here. We got suits, we got coats. There's a lot of things that they can choose mm -hmm. from dress shirts for interviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Suits. Dress suit for interviews. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Teach them how to get a job.